I took you off intentionally. Hey, listen, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We've been having a few technical issues, but we're hoping that things go as planned. But I have a special announcement and we have a special guest and we have a special training today. So today we're, I'm going to share with you with my, along with my guest, who's an expert in building free broker credit and factoring. He's going to share with you why quick pays are killing your broker credit. Now, I didn't realize this when he first shared it with me a while back, but it makes a ton of sense. And we're going to show you not only why that happens, but how to fix it. All right. So that's what we're going to do today. In a second, I'm going to introduce my guest. Um, but in the meantime, hold tight here. Um, I know, again, hopefully you guys can hear me and see me okay. We had a few little technical bumbos, you know, bumbles, but I think we'll get through it. Um, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from, wherever you're at. I'm in Buffalo, New York. Hit me up. Let me know where you're at. And uh, I'll give you a quick shout out. Here's the agenda. Uh, we're going to do some quick shout outs, like always. Then we're going to uh, introduce my guest and we're going to go through the training. Why quick pays are killing your freight broker credit. And then at the end, we're going to do live Q&A. But I have really good news for you too. Um, hang tight with us through to the end because my guest wants to make a special offer that you are definitely not going to want to miss. It's a free offer. And it's something that will, I promise you, it's something you guys have been waiting for, something that you need as a freight broker startup. All right. So hang tight to the end, but here we go. We'll do quick shout outs and then we'll jump in. All right. So we've got Cynthia, as usual, from Maryland. Welcome. Um, we've got Shaka from Hope Hills, North Carolina, Acorn Logistics from California. Welcome. We've got Balin from Amarillo, Texas, Tim Quirk, my friend Tim Quirk from Rochester, New York, Corey from Billings, Montana, uh, Operations and DSN Expedited from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Gary Ellison from Houston, uh, Delman Harper from Chesterfield, Michigan, Felicia from Phoenix. We got Davit from Armenia. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. Truly appreciate you being here. We're going to let a couple more people get live. And then, of course, most people are going to catch us on replay. And if you are one of my replay folks, um, hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from my replay folks. I know you guys are busy and it's sometimes hard to catch this live in the middle of the day. But here we are every Monday at noon. We do these live trainings. And today, again, we have a special guest and a special training. This is something you guys have been asking me for. This is something that I truly believe that will help you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have invited him on to the live, okay? So this is something I think you sorely need and will and will see huge benefit from as a freight broker startup. Welcome, uh, Victor from Bronx, New York. Uh, Devin from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Socrates49 from Richmond, Virginia. Chris from Boca Raton, Florida. Aram from Armenia. Luke Wright, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to uh, grab a quick drink and then we're going to get the show on the road. I'm going to invite my guest on. And um, here's the good thing. You guys don't really need to take notes because you can always catch us on replay um, as well as obviously you can um, you can check out the YouTube channel where this will be released as well as streaming on other platforms. So if you guys are excited and you want me to introduce the guest, do me a huge favor right now. Hit the like button and share the stream. That's the price of admission. We didn't charge you to come into this free training today, but do me a huge favor, hit the like button, share the stream. And then I'm going to invite my guest up in here in about 60 seconds. We've got a few more people that are joining us. We got Luke. Welcome. Uh, Ula Zidmir from Minx, Belarus. We got Chris from Greensboro, North Carolina, Mike from Dallas, Luke from Alexandria, Indiana. We have people from all over. I love the fact that we have people logging in from all around the world. I mean, we get people from South America. We get people from Africa. We get people from the Middle East. We get people from uh, the UK. We get people from, you know, all over the place, right? Uh, it's pretty amazing. Matter of fact, I think, you know, you guys know the stats if you've been here before. I've trained over 10,000 freight brokers and freight agents. But the cool thing is, is that a while ago, I did a quick kind of a quick background check on it. We've trained students in 16 different countries, which is pretty amazing to me because when I put this whole program together back in 2009, I really only thought it was going to be people in the US that were going to be interested. But the reality is, you know, the global economy, the digital world we're in, um, new good news travels fast. So here we are. All right, cool. So here is my guest, everybody. Welcome, Tom Croto from Opperfy. Um, Tom, would you do us a huge favor? 
and give us a quick intro to yourself. I know you got a really interesting background, a little bit with the military, how you started Operify. Give us a minute or two on that, and then we'll jump into the topic today, obviously, which is why quick pays are killing your freight broker credit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on, Dennis. Hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Tom Croto, owner and founder of Operation Finance, Operify. I started in this industry about 13 years ago, coming from a military background, going into business school, started with a factoring company who had a asset side, they had a brokerage side. So I kind of got a taste of all different aspects of the industry. Branched off in 2019, started Operify. The one thing that I realized that was really lacking in our industry was just education. One thing that I think separates us is being able to educate not only our trucking clients, but our brokerage clients. And so we sought out, especially during times of COVID, we had a lot of influx into this industry. We had a number of different clients and carriers and new brokerages that came in that they really didn't understand how to operate a trucking company or how to help operate a freight brokerage. So we took a lot of time and energy in helping to provide information that was lacking, where a lot of factoring companies, it's kind of ambiguous in what's happening behind the scenes. But we're very transparent. Our goal is to protect the golden goose for our clients to streamline and get that information to straight to our business owners. So then that way they can improve and create some sort of sustainability and scalability, which then helps improve our relationships altogether. So I'm excited to be here to kind of talk about some interesting topics. And one thing that I think when I mentioned to you previously was everybody doesn't really understand why quick pays have this kind of there's, it's actually negatively impacting your business on a, a number of different fronts on how to build your broker credit. So I thought it was going to be a unique topic to discuss today. So I'm happy to be here. So thanks for having me, Dennis. Yeah, Tom, thank you so much for being here. First, let me kind of tee this up for the audience. You know, I've been contacted and had numerous conversations over the years with different factoring companies. Mm -hmm. And at different times throughout the last, let's call it the last decade, right? Factoring companies have varying opinions on whether they like to work with startups or even whether they like to work with freight brokers in general. Absolutely. And, and not only that, one of the things that really stood out when we started talking was your emphasis on education. Really, with most of the companies that I've spoke to, most of the companies I've researched, and most of the companies you find online, education is really not a big part of their platform it's kind of, I'm sure that they have to do some of it on the back end, but they don't lead with it. And that was one of the things that kind of interested me most in what you were doing is you would put together um, some trainings and some educational pieces for, you know, just people in the market as well as your clients. And that's part of what we're going to dissect today. And is I'm going to give you, you guys a little bit of a hint here on the back end of this, we're going to make a special offer, right? A special offer. It's free. You're not going to have to pull your credit card out. Don't worry. It's absolutely free, but you are absolutely positively going to want to get this um, training. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It's going to be a training that you can absolutely get for free above and beyond that. So if you enjoy what you hear today, if you think Tom is credible and you love to hear more information, you'd love to learn more about broker credit. Um, we're going to, we're going to have an offer on the back end. So hold tight for that. Okay. So Tom, we got a lot of people waiting and we've been kind of planning this for several weeks now. So now's the time break this down for us. Like we're a fifth grader. Let us understand why our quick pay is killing your freight broker credit. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I first always like to set the stage with just an example of us as consumers building credit when we were first turning 18 years old, right? We all remember turning 18 years old. We remember getting those little pamphlets in the mail or going to a Macy's and they're asking you for your social security card or everything like that. You didn't have the ability as a, as a brand new 18 year old to qualify for a car note or any type of large credit facility or anything like that. So you couldn't qualify, absolutely, definitely not a mortgage or anything like that. So I want to set the stage first and kind of putting yourself, if you are a brand new startup freight brokerage, that you're 18 years old again, and that you are, you might need to get a cosign. You might need to get somebody to kind of help piggyback in order to start to build that credible, those, that credible market data within the industry. So first and foremost, you're, you're a startup, you're brand new. The credit landscape that is within the transportation, just business credit in general, has very similar parallels when it comes to us as consumers, right? Us as consumers, we've got Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. All of us are, should be familiar now that we all have a Chase credit card 
or a car note. And they're reporting to those credit agencies on a monthly basis on our spend and our uh, basically our payment history. And we still have those same credit agencies that work in the back end within business credit institutional uh, uh, data sources. So we've got, you've all heard of Dun, Dun and Bradstreet. You've all heard of potentially and Sonia. You've all heard of, there's a number of, of these, these credit companies that are out there. I would argue that within the credit space, the in, in the, the freight brokerage transportation space, uh, TransUnion is there's 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 quasi uh, pieces of TransUnion, but and Sonia being the uh, number one, I believe, and they are owned by Equifax. There's another company that's out there that's called Corterra. They are owned by a credit agency called Moody's. There's also uh, TransCredit. There's a number of different those resources that are out there, and so that's first and foremost to set the stage that you are a brand new brand new business, you're 18 years old, and how do these systems work? And what are the correlations between how us as consumers and us as business owners, and how can we actually build that credit? So I wanna provide an example when it comes to, can I can I just explain why just the, the concept of quick pays and why that within itself is actually hurting brand new businesses as a whole? Can I start there? Yeah, let me just clarify one thing. I think this is a great starting point. You know. Everybody, what Tom just said was this, in a, in a summarized version, we were all sitting there as young adults, young, you know, late teenagers in our 20s with no credit, and we struggled. And that's where a lot of the parallel with new freight broker startups is. And so what he's going to share with you now, I want you to connect the dots there, because that's very important that you understand. That's a great starting point, um, because if we start in chapter two or chapter three, sometimes you're not going to connect the dots. So I love the way you did that. I think that's really important foundation. So now why don't you give that example and kind of break that whole um, quick pay thing down for us so that we can understand where the problems are and how to fix it. So uh, every time we speak to a brand new broker, one of their, their biggest concerns are is that they're not getting approved through factoring companies or they're working with a trucking company that they're not extending them credit. And so obviously there's this want and desire to say, I got to move my customer's freight. So quick pay is my only option. And I've spoken with a number of different brokers throughout the years where they're like, I've been, you know, I've been quick paying. I don't understand. I, I, I pay within five days. I pay upon delivery. I, I, I've got great payment history. I don't understand why I'm not building that credit data on the back end. And the key to that is understanding the pieces on how that back end works. And so us as consumers, the example that I like to provide is, we all, it's Monday, it's everyone, you know, some of you might have a case of the Mondays, you might want to go out and take your family out to dinner. And so family of four, you might go to a restaurant and you're going to use your Chase credit card and possibly spend $100 on your Chase credit card. Now, imagine that you go back to your home that same evening and you log on to Chase and you pay from your bank balance immediately onto your Chase credit card. So you had a $100 balance and now it's a $0 balance. Well, what that is basically is us as consumers, those agencies, Chase, they're only reporting to the TransUnions, the Equifaxes, and the experience of the world probably once a month. So your credit card statement last month was zero. You raised $100, you paid it off. Your credit card statement next month will be zero again. From the credit agency's perspective, they never saw that you increased your limit and paid it off. They didn't see that data blip that happened within the cycle. And so it's important that once you realize that, OK, these agencies, they're presenting a statement balance and then I'm paying it off. And then that balance is showing on the next statement that it's down to zero. You need to have that flow through data. And us as factoring companies, we are the uh, synonymous with you as the consumer. Factoring companies are like like the, your, your mortgage company, your finance, your, your car note company, uh, all the different credit card companies. We're the creditors. Once that data flows through us and is into our system, Operify and all the other factoring companies, they're reporting that data, that receivables data. They're reporting it once, maybe even twice a month. And so if you're, if you're providing this quick pay option, you're never getting that opportunity to have the data flow through into another institution's system, which then is doing that once or twice a month reporting. So I always like that example with the, from, the, from a consumer's perspective for you to really understand that if you were to go home and pay that off as a consumer, the data agencies are never reporting that. It's the same exact concept when it comes to business credit. You, yeah. have, to, you have to show 
that companies are approving you and that you uh, you have a credit limit of 2000, 5000, 10000, whatever it is, and then that balance goes down. So then that way they the algorithms on the back end have an opportunity to recognize, oh, you're paying in 45 days, oh, you're paying in 30 days. But if you're paying so quickly, it's actually that data is it's it's actually hurting you when you think that, oh man, I've been paying great. I'm just paying all of my carriers and everything's going well. It's it's actually detrimental to some of the credit data that's supposed to be flowing through to give you that score that you're looking for. Yeah, that makes total sense. But common sense sometimes doesn't isn't quite so common, right? Even yeah. myself, who's been around for 20 years in the industry, I never really thought about mm -hmm. the fact how quick pays can hurt your credit, right? Now, let me let me clarify one thing really quick because I want to clarify and get the answer from you. Obviously, if a broker is working with a factoring company and you do a quick pay and you don't get to register that payment, right? It doesn't get registered on the, on the credit reporting agencies, right? Uh, obviously, you drew a good picture there. But what about if a, if a broker is not going through a factoring company but is working direct with a carrier and then they quick pay that, and then that carrier then um, reports that payment. Is it the same sort of thing, or does that is it kind of like a separate a separate issue? How does that work? It depends, uh, and I think that the the key to it is going to be probably how big is the carrier. So if you're working with a larger carrier, a larger trucking company, maybe it's a Landstar, maybe it's a larger outfit because they're subscribing to the Insonias and the credit institutions. Right. It's it's the ones who are actually. The, the subscribers are the ones who are able to provide the data to those credit agencies. And so because we supply our data to those credit agencies, we also have access to be able to view those reports. And so we're providing that information. So if you have a small carrier, one, two truck operation, chances are they're probably not subscribing to, they're not sending their payables data, their receivables data to TransCredit. They're not sending it to uh, Equifax or, ex excuse me, and Sonia. They're not sending it to those agencies. So it's never even registering. So Got the it. other interesting thing that I find on and Sonia reports or any other reporting institutions that are out there, and there's a number of, there's an, another one called Factors Network. So Factors Network, TransCredit, and then Sonia being, I think, kind of big ones, um, is that also when a factoring company is looking at you, they're also looking at how big you are as a freight brokerage and and that's being reported through that that their monthly receivables data so if you and i are both a factoring company and we've got abc brokerage that we've extended credit to and you've got twenty five hundred dollars reported on their on on your balances and i've got twenty five hundred dollars reported on my balance well the algorithm picks up oh hey they might be doing about five thousand a month in average purchase for our receivables volume like kind of like a gross sales number well imagine if you're doing a quick pay and I'm reporting it. Well, now the algorithm is showing that their average purchases, their average volume is only $2,500 a month. And so not only is quick pays, are you circumventing how the data flows in to have an algorithm that says that they're paying at a certain period of time, but your volume and how big your brokerage is and, and which helps a factoring company determine how viable you are, right? If they see that you're only doing 10,000 a month, they're kind of like, do I really want to take that risk? But if they see that you're doing 50,000 a month, they're like, okay, they, they're probably well diversified. They've got six other factoring companies that are approving them credit. Me being checking out, checking them out for the first time, I'll give them a chance, you know? And so you have that one more opportunity to gain another creditor. So those quick pays are hindering not only your days to pay because that data is not flowing through, but also your volumes and the number of, of receivables or your gross sales that's actually being reported on your business too. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, because I, I think that there's a lot of factors that the credit reporting agencies use, not only on the consumer level, but on a business level mm -hmm. to ascertain the credibility or the credit, you know, whether you have A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever credit, you know what I mean? Yeah. However, they're ranking it, um, credit. And it's not just the days to pay, it's the Num I'm sure it's the number of different um, vendors that you have that are giving mm -hmm. you credit. It's, you know, the days to pay, it's the amounts, it's the, that whole history that goes into that equation. Absolutely. And, and there's, there's one differentiator that I like to kind of clarify when it comes to the business credit and the consumer credit, you know, the, the, and those two, uh, that comparison. Us as consumers, we're told we shouldn't have too many credit cards. We shouldn't have too many lenders that are out there and 
debt is bad in that sort in, in that scenario. On the business side, it's actually better. If you have creditors where you've got 50 different factoring companies or 50 different companies that have extended you credit, that's actually a good sign because that means that there's a number of different institutions, which there's a number of diff 50 different underwriting managers, 50 different credit analysts that have all viewed your business and said, these guys are going to be around for a while. And so the one differentiator here between us as consumers and businesses is that it's actually better to have more creditors on the business side than it is for, and, it, and obviously it depends. It, we're talking about trade credit, right? Receivable. Right. Not that you're going out there and taking a loan here, taking a loan here. I mean, those are those are different. Uh, but this is it's trade credit. How many creditors that are out there that are that are extending saying, yeah, we're going to take a shot and we're going to extend that invoice and we're going to wait for that to get paid in the next 30 to 45 days. That makes perfect sense. Is there anything else you want to add to that component about the whole, you know, quick pay, you know, example and how maybe what they can do to improve that or how factoring can help them to improve that. I mean, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's so counterintuitive because a lot of startup brokers are working with a brand new factoring company and there's, there's, there's a little bit of a, a catch to it because us as factors, we can offer that quick pay for our clients and say, Hey, well, you know what? If their factoring company is not approving you, then we'll just offer them a quick pay. And there's a split fee usually that takes place sometimes where a factoring company is going to piece of that. The new broker, they're getting a piece of that quick pay. So they're splitting that fee. So there's a piece of it that's kind of enticing, right? Because you've got this factoring fee that you're able to offset by offering this quick pay to the carrier. But then at the end of the day, got to keep in mind that it's never flowing through. And the factoring company doesn't really want to divulge that information because they're earning an additional fee on it. And so our kind of value prop, the way that we see for our clients is we tell them, listen, you need us on day one. You might need us for working capital because you have to do quick pays. But our goal is to help you build your credit over the next six months to a year where you don't need Operify for working capital purposes, but you keep Operify from an administrative. We, we handle your receivables and your payables and all that other stuff. So um, from a from to link this all together, understanding that you as this brand new business not only are you out there selling your customers and making sure that you're improving and diversifying and getting more customers, you also have to sell this other community, which is the factoring community and creditors. And you have to make sure that you establish yourself as a reliable, credible individual business owner, because we all know how much fraud is in this industry. And, and the one piece of this is that there's all these credit analysts that are protecting their business. We have credit analysts that are looking at every single broker with a fine tooth comb and all the little pieces that what we deem as being a credible business, if we're going to take that chance. And there's so many factors that see with all the fraud and all the risk that's out there, they're protecting themselves and they're protecting the, their carriers. So you have to see this as not only are you going out and having to sell customers, you also have to go out there and sell factoring companies and prove who you are. And, and it takes time. It takes energy. There is no quick fix. The other thing I'd like to clarify is you working with the factoring company, no factor is out there reporting your payables data. They're reporting receivables data, but because if you sign up with Operify and we've sent out 15, 20, 50,000 a month in your payables data, that's different. Payables data is not what's being reported. It's not like you have an agency that's out there that maybe you use a QuickBooks to pay off your credit cards. QuickBooks isn't processing and sending that payment history to the credit agencies, right? If you've got you as a consumer, maybe you're using Intuit. I don't know what it is, but if you've got some sort of automated payment that's happening, it's not the payment that's reporting to the Experian, the Equifax or the TransUnion. It's the creditor themselves that who is owed the funds, who's reporting that data. So there's a lot of different you know nuances to those pieces. And so what we try to do is provide with our clients and obviously with your students as well, that taste of how us as the factoring company, how are we viewing your operation? What are the different aspects that we're looking at to give you that chance, to give you, allow you that opportunity to start building that credit? So hopefully after today, we'll be able to, to help educate a lot more individuals um, and, and provide them that roadmap to get in that point where they're frustrated for the past two years, where finally they see the, uh, the, the, see the light at the end of the tunnel and know the steps in order to get there. Yeah, I love that. And and I can tell you right now, guys, listen, lean in because we're about to give you this special offer. And there's two different components to it. Number one, you're going to be able to access the Operify 
freight broker credit building uh, course, their online course that they created specifically for freight brokers. Normally that course would cost you 250 bucks, but Tom has been nice, nice enough to waive that fee. So you can actually get access to that for free, hundred percent free it costs you nothing. Okay. So we're going to give you a link to do that. But then secondly, any of you that are actively out there looking for a factoring company that will work with startups, Operify is here to help. They're one of the very few out there today in this economy that are willing to work with freight broker startups. And, you know, I've, I've had numerous conversations with Tom. I've vetted the company. I've went through the process and I've brought him to you as a solution because I know that this is an important part of the equation for a lot of startups. Whether And sometimes you're, you know, you may have been in just getting your business started and just starting to move loads. You might be someone who's been doing it for a while, but maybe your factoring company is struggling or pulling back or is trying to, you know, maybe isn't quite as cooperative because maybe you're not giving them the volume or whatever reasons are, you know, that's the reason why I brought in Tom and his team at Operify. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I'm going to try to put this banner up on the screen really quick and let's see if it works. Okay, cool. So I think this will work. So there's two links here. Okay. It says for broker credit, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit. That's where you're going to go to get access to the credit. You'll sign up. It's a free enrollment and you'll get instant access to the actual credit training. Okay. So normally that's a $250 product. You're getting it waived if you sign up today. Okay. Secondly, if you are actively out there looking for a factoring company, if you're someone who is, has been having conversations with factoring company or searching for factoring companies, or maybe you went to some of the other factoring companies that were previously dealing with startups, but aren't working with them now, you can go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow. That's going to bring you to an online application. You fill the basic information out. And then somebody from Tom's team is going to reach out to you and go through the process and go through the vetting process of how they can help you start factoring as a freight broker startup. So Tom, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think that that kind of sums it up. I mean, the one thing that you would think is there's so much information that's out there that everybody gets pieces here and pieces there. It's, but what's, it's, it's difficult to funnel that all into what's legitimate, what's not, what's being kept secrets and, we're, we're an open book. And, and I think going back to what we had with our clients with, with COVID and we had a number of businesses that were going out of business because they didn't understand all these different nuances on the trucking side. We've got business plans that they put together, you know, break even calculators that they can put together to help them understand how to scale. And the other side is on the brokerage side. We, we wanted to, to protect that golden goose to be able to create a scalable business and a partner who really understands what they're doing. The great thing about our employees, I've got operational team members on staff. It's not like you're getting a, a support person who has never been in the brokerage industry. I've got prior dispatchers. I've got tr prior logistics owners. I've got transportation managers. We have an individual that's on our team who used to work for a bonding company. We're, we provide a number of different resources that give you those educational tools straight from the horse's mouth. So if you're looking for that additional support, that's our main one of our main philosophies and one of our main main missions is to help you understand this business. So then that way we're going to benefit it for years to come. And if it gets to a point where now year from now you've gotten credit and you're able to hire a staff and you're able to go on your own, more power to you. Uh, when I full disclosure, when I started my business, I started out with a factoring relationship before I was able to qualify for traditional financing. I'm passionate about it. I understand why factoring is that First step, it's an entrepreneurial finance endeavor that kickstarts your business. Once you're in and once you can grow to the point where you qualify for traditional financing, that's our goal. We want to make sure that you grow your business and that we build that relationship. And along the way, you're going to refer business to us. We're going to help you out. And it's going to be it's it's an amicable relationship. So our goal is hopefully we can get to that point, just like I did when I first started my business to be able to help our clients to get to that holy grail where now they're a viable business name, they've got 10 employees and they're operating on their own. Uh, and it's just a good relationship even after the fact. I love it. And listen, you guys are really going to enjoy the broker credit, right? The free broker credit program. I went through it myself. I actually went through every single module, every single lesson. I went through the entire thing. You guys are truly going to enjoy it. It's well done. It's well put together. And again, if you sign up today, 
you will get it absolutely free. I can't promise if it's going to cost you later, but right today, if you sign up today, freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit, you'll get instant access at zero charge. And if you guys are looking for factoring now, again, go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow. You'll go through that quick form and then you'll get on the phone with somebody from Tom's team. Make sure you fill out that form. You know, they're going to be very busy if you try to call them. Again, you know, you're going to get the quickest answers by going through that form. So listen, Tom, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for clarifying that. I think that was an eye opener for a lot of people in the audience. And listen, if you guys are curious about becoming a freight broker, if this is maybe the first time and you're just getting started or this is your first live or you haven't went through any training yet, you can check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com, trained over 10,000 students um, again, we offer a 60 day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee. Uh, truly appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next week. Now, for those of you that want to stick around for the live Q and A, all right, if you want to hang for the live Q and A, we're here, Tom and I, um, and we are more than willing to answer any questions you have to the best of our capabilities. Now we do have some time limitations. So if you guys have a question, do me a favor before we do that. Give me, before we jump into questions, on a scale of one to 10, one meaning, Dennis, this was a complete waste of my time. You're a jerk and I don't like Tom. Or a 10 meaning, I had no clue. This is awesome and I learned a lot. Hit me up in the comments and let me know one to 10 where you stand. We're just looking for honest feedback. It could be a four, it could be a six, it could be a seven. But if it's anything less than an eight, let us know what we could have done better. That's the goal, right? We want. I want to improve. I believed based on a lot of feedback from you guys that this topic would be extremely valuable, right? This new relationship would be extremely valuable, right? So you tell me one to 10, what do you guys think? Um, we're looking for some feedback. And then again, we are going to do live Q and a, so hold tight. Okay. Hold your questions. We are going to do live Q and a, I know we've got, I don't know, maybe we've got a lot of people that are live and a bunch of people are going to catch us on replay. If you are on replay, we will try to come back in and answer your questions later. But for the live people, we're definitely going to jump into that. So Betty says it's a 10. Felicia says it's a 10. Uh, Balan says it's a 10. Uh, Dalman says it's a 10. Shaka, 10. Chris, 10. Good. Well, I think we delivered then, right? Especially when you consider this, this was a absolute free training, cost you zero. And now we have some special offers you can take advantage of on the back end. I'm going to leave that banner up on the screen here for a little bit. Uh, and I'll try to pop it up again throughout, you know, but we are going to take some questions now. So let's jump into questions. If you guys have questions, hit me up in the comments now. Um, I'll tee this one up. Tom's company name is Operfy, okay? It's Operational Finance. That's the name and it's operfy.com, right? That's the, that's the company, Tom? Yep, yes, sir. Yeah, so um, if you go to these URLs, it will redirect you directly to, um, to the locations where you need to get access to the credit for free. If you could go to his site and you could pay 250 bucks if you want, you, I'm sure Tom would take your money, no problem. <laughs> or you can go through this link and you can get it for free. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. What are the other ones? Uh, Acorn Logistics had an interesting question. Yeah. Here's here's a question for you. Yeah. This is this is right in your wheelhouse, Tom. Hit it. Yeah. As a new brokerage, does a quick pay in the near term help establish trust and help build a relationship with carriers? I, I, actually, yes, you are correct. That. There, there is a, when you're first starting off and you have a carrier that maybe they're hesitant, they're reluctant, and you have a factoring company that's basically saying, you know, hey, we're not going to approve you initially. Yeah, you might need to do some of those. You might need to start out that way initially. But the end goal being is that you want to make sure that you've established that trust to get to the point where you've actually built that credit line in place. And then that way they're accepting you. So how, what we train our clients, our freight broker clients on doing is that if they receive that notice of assignment or if they receive a, uh, a uh, inquiry from a carrier that's working with a factoring company, the better way to build trust is not quick paying the carrier. It's actually quick paying the factoring company because every time a factoring company gets a payment, it's what's called uh, it's, it's a non factor transaction. So it still flows through the system. Now, it's not going to flow through their system in the form of a receivable but it, it eventually builds trust in the fact that their accounting systems and their credit systems, they're going to see that Acorn Logistics has been paying us for the past five times to the point where they're like, hey, you know, we've been denying this credit where we could be earning a factoring fee on the past $5,000 that this company's paid to us. Why don't we go ahead and actually start approving them and getting their credit established? So again, on a short-term basis, it will build that trust and relationship. But just knowing that in the long term, 
your goal and your strategy behind that quick pay? Are you paying it to the carrier? Or are you going to pay it to the factoring company? Because the factoring company at the end of the day is ultimately going to be the one that's actually extending you that credit to then finally get that data flowing through. So very good point. And it's the answer is yes, short term, long term. You guys know the goal. Yeah, that makes total sense. Betty has a question. Please give me the broker credit website again here. I'm going to pull it up for you really quick. I'm going to give you that banner once again. Anybody who's looking to sign up for the free freight broker credit educational program through Operify, here it is right here. You go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit. All right. It's freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit, B-R-O-K-E-R-C-R-E. D I T right. That's for the broker credit. And if you want the, um, if you want more information and talk to somebody on Tom's team about, um, setting up factoring now for your existing freight brokerage, uh, again, you're going to have to be an existing freight broker, right? I mean, if you're not operational, meaning you're just starting to go through some of the freight broker training and you don't have your broker authority and you don't have that, there's probably not much that Tom's going to be able to do for you right now until, you at least get that, you know, your MC number and your business set up. So, I mean, I don't want to clog up Tom's phone lines and his email box with people that aren't really ready for that. So please make sure you have at least your MC and your, uh, your operational, maybe you're not moving a lot of invoices right now, but you are a startup and you do have your freight broker authority. So those are the links for the broker credit and for getting information about the actual factoring process and what they go through and how that all works and how to get, get you set up. Let's see what else we got here. All right, we've got, uh, all right. Hi, Dennis, what's the difference between distributors, wholesalers, and suppliers in the food industry? Okay, so here's a good, it's an interesting question. All right, so this is more a question probably about your sales efforts and how you're niching down or targeting somebody, specific freight niche. Um, you know, there some of these terms are, um, are used and they mean the same thing in different circles, okay? So wholesalers, distributors, right? Those sometimes can be synonymous, right? It depends upon how the company's um, sales, um, their go-to-market strategy is. Are they selling direct? Are they going through a wholesaler? Are they going through a distributor? Sometimes there's multiple. Sometimes there's there could be a, the supplier, which manufactures the food or maybe imports the food, right? And then you've got distrib distribution points and then you've got wholesalers and then you got retailers. So they can sometimes be used synonymously. I'm not sure specifically what you're looking for behind the scenes there. If you have a follow-up question, let me know um, because let me know what you're trying to get to or how you're going to use this information and maybe I can help you connect the dots, okay? But ultimately, um, all of those companies in, in not all of those companies, but in many cases, those companies are going to be responsible for the freight bills, right? The freight invoices, unless they sell to their end user, their end customer through a FOB origin, right? Where they're making them responsible for it, right? If they're actually building the freight cost into their invoicing and into their buying process, then they are a potential viable shipper for you as a broker. So I'm trying to kind of read into it a little bit, but if you have a follow-up question, let me know. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Okay, oh, Boris has a question. How old does your brokerage need to be until a factoring company or customers accept to work with you? Fire away, Tom. I'd what, say what it's, that's, a, that? that's a loaded question, right? Yeah. Because uh, I, like I said, in, in some of our examples, I've spoken with brokers who have been doing business for two or three years that have a strong book of business, but they still are not getting accepted. And it's because they're doing these quick pays, but they don't necessarily understand how the credit dynamics work and all these other factors. So us, we're accepting brand new broker authorities. We have a lot of different agents who are working with a larger shop that are looking out and they're starting up their brand new brokerage authority, but they already come with a book of business. And so we, we provide them those tools. So we'll accept them and we'll work with them. But the idea being is that those entities that are out there, your customers, that's all relationship based. So as far as how long and when they're going to accept you, that's how many, how often you go to their warehouse and give them a box of donuts or take them out to lunch. So, I mean, that's just, that that's a relationship based thing, but from a factoring company's perspective, there's no one size fits all. I, I would say minimum of until all factoring companies, 
that could be two years. That could, it just depends on how aggressive you are on the, the, the selling on the factoring side. Yeah, and like I said I, earlier, I mentioned that there is a selling component uh, from you as going out and finding freight with your customers, but there also has to be a selling to the rest of the community and the rest of the market that shows that you're credible, that you're viable, that you're going to be here for the next 10 years where a lot of these scammers and a lot of these fraudsters are opening doors and shutting down. So that's an ongoing process. And we've seen our clients get up to a 90 credit score and as little as four months, right? And we go through those tiny little processes where they're calling up factoring companies. We're calling up the factoring companies. They're providing credit reference letters. They're, they're, they're showing their credibility. They're putting in the work on the other side of the equation to get one more approved and one more approved and one more approved. It might, and then you're going to realize once you've hit that tipping point where now you've gotten 12 companies to approve you, now it just becomes that much more easier. So that initial starting block, I would say in that first six months, it's difficult and it's, it takes a grind, but never lose sight of it because it's, it's just as important to manage those relationships as it is to manage your customers' relationships. So you have to look at both sides of your receivables and your payables data. Um, and, but like I said, I've seen up to four months where we can get somebody to a 90, but it just depends on so many different variables, how much freight you have, how, how good uh, the, the relationships with your, with your house carriers and that sort and how, and their relationships with their factoring companies, how many of those can you get approved? So it just, there's so many different variables to unpack in that, but hopefully it kind of gives you an idea of how short it can be, but also how long it can be to the point where the rest of the market sees, okay, these guys are going to be around for years to come. And here's the good news. If you sign up for the free freight broker credit course, it tells you how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, right? How that works. So if you sign up for that today for free, you go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit, like we shared with you before, and you sign up for that for free, it will walk you through how to do that, right? So it's a very step-by-step -step process. That's the reason why I'm here today. I love the way it guided new brokers through the process of not only building credit, but using factoring as a way to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then on the, the second part of your question about customers, there's one word that's going to determine um, when they'll start doing business with you. It's trust. Once the trust outweighs the fear of bringing on a new vendor, that's when you'll do business with them. How good are you at building trust? That's the sales process. Is it going to happen in the first call? No. Is it going to happen in the second call? Probably not. Could it be your fifth or sixth or eighth or 10th encounter? Absolutely. Might that take you two weeks, a month, six months? It depends. I've had brokers that have went through my course and week one, week one, done $7,000 in business in profit. They're week one. I've also had brokers that have went through and agents that have went through that have taken three or four or five or six months to get their first shipper. It's, there is no hard and fast answer for that. Mm -hmm. But the, the real answer is how quickly can you build trust with that potential customer? And once you do that, then that's what makes the whole process flow. It's not rates. I understand everybody likes to point to rates, okay? People like salespeople like to point to rates. Okay. That when they point to price, well, our price isn't good enough. We can't get a cheap enough price. That's typically, in my opinion, a weak salesperson. And the reason why I say that is because it's an excuse. The reality is you could be the cheapest. And if they don't trust you, it won't matter. You won't get the business anyway. Okay. So you have to develop that trust. Is price a factor? 100%. Is it going to be one of the variables? 100%. But again, you could be the cheapest. You could come in and underbid everybody by 20%. If they don't trust you, I don't care. You're not going to get the business. Okay. So that's that's the second part of that. Okay. That I think was really important that you need to connect the dots on. Okay. Good question though. And for those of you that are looking for the links, there they are as we field the next question. Samara, come on up. Hello, do you check personal credit score first to generate your factoring rate or how do you charge brokers? There you go, Tom. Yeah, we've got a number of different pieces of that. So all factoring companies have different processes and how this is done, whether or not there's a personal credit check or not. Uh, we have a third party underwriting service that looks at federal tax lanes, you know, judgments, anything. There's, there's generally when it comes to credit, there's four C's of credit. There's collateral, capacity, credit, and 
there, there's a, a few different variables that they're looking into to determine whether or not you're a viable candidate for what we're offering. Because at the end of the day, this is a financial services relationship. So we're not checking a personal credit score. We're not do, doing any FICO hard scores. I can't speak for all factoring companies. We don't do that personally. Um, and so that piece is that part of that question. And as far as how we charge for brokers, we have two different models for that. And it's it's because we work within the startup freight broker space. We have trial options and we also have annual options. Our trial options start at three and a half percent. Our annual options start at three percent. We also offer veteran and military discounts. Now, sometimes a lot of people kind of fall over their seat and they hear that, you know, three percent, three and a half percent. And what the the key to this is that we're customizable for our clients who have volume and who grow. So if I have a client who's starting off and they're a brand new freight broker only doing 20,000 a month, well, if I have another customer, another client who's doing 200, 300, 400,000 a month, obviously there's gonna be changes in the rate that, that speaks to that, that reward for having more volume, right? And so there's always gonna be those fluctuations. So we start off, at here's kind of the cookie cutter rate. And then once you're able to provide us more data, a customer data, and we can look at the insights. The other thing component to this is your customer relationships. If you have a customer that's paying in 90 days versus a customer that's paying in 30 days, I have some clients where their customers are paying them in seven days. Those clients who are having customers in seven day payment terms, they're going to get a significant discount than the ones whose, whose customers are paying in 90 days. So there's just so many different variables when it comes to uh, rate creation and how we kind of come to those terms. But at the end of the day, everything is customizable. Everything is negotiable, depending upon what your specific circumstances look like. Yeah. And here's the reality. Nobody's trying to hide the fact that uh, the factoring is more expensive than traditional financing. But right now, the problem is a freight broker startup. You're not going to get traditional financing. OK, it's just not going to happen. Banks are going to require you at l probably at least two years of track record of having some sort of uh, real business flowing through your company with receivables and payables and, and true activity in history before they're going to really give you any sort of a, a credit line of sorts. Right. Uh, if if then. Right. Um, and then on the other side of it is this. The key here is this. The, listen, I'm not saying that the rate isn't important. It is. But what you have to understand is it gets you in the game. It's called cash flow. Without mm -hmm. the cash flow, you don't have a business. Okay. I was fortunate when I started that we had a little bit of cash on the sidelines. We were able to self-finance. And if you can do that, great. Do it. Right. Do it. Absolutely do it. Most people that go through my program, most people that start a freight brokerage don't have 50 or $100,000 sitting on the sidelines to use to finance their own receivables. So this is an option for you. It's just a cash flow option. It's more expensive than traditional financing, but it gets you in the game. And then as your volume grows, your rates should go down a little bit. And over time, once you get established, you may not even need factoring. You know, that's one of the cool things about Tom. What he said was he said it multiple times on this live. He said, listen, if we get you to the point where you've been working with us for two or three or four years and you know, you've know you built up enough credit and you now have a, a, a business credit line with a traditional bank and you don't need us anymore. Hey, that's fine. We work together. We both found value. You know, maybe there's some other things we can offer you on the back end. Maybe there's some services that you need that, you know, that aren't maybe quite as expensive at that time. So there's a lot of different opportunities for you, but the key you need to understand right now, and the reason why the, the, the reason why uh, the link is freightbreakerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow is for that exact reason, because you need cash to flow. Cash is like oxygen without it, you die. Okay. As a business, that's how it works. Okay. So good question though. Thank you very much. And here's Ken Mumford, who says, already with Opera 5, they've been fantastic. Awesome. So there's a there's a testimonial from one of our existing students, someone who's an existing part of our community, who I know personally, right, and have worked with personally in our Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. So that always bodes really well when a non-solicited, <laughs> right, uh, see, Ken. testimonial comes in. So good. Uh, Delman says, do you require minimum credit scores from shippers and do your do you accept shippers with a credit score that has a credit report that is not available? So how does mm -hmm. it work from that perspective with approving? Good, 
Good question. Yeah, that well, was yeah. a really good question. Yep. Uh, as far as minimum credit scores, like I said, there there's when we're when we're evaluating a shipper, there are still a number of different variables that we are looking at. No different than a credit department who's looking at you as a brand new broker and wanting to accept uh, you as a as a, a, what in our industry we call an account debtor. Uh, we're viewing the shipper in the same focus. So we're looking at a number of different variables that determine that. I have a number of clients that will reach out and say, hey, this is a shipper. And we test the systems to see, is, is there any credit data that's available? Sometimes there's not. And sometimes it's, it's you know, we've got some shippers that are maybe, um, you know, ag aggregate suppliers and, and rock and sand that the, a lot of times they're quick paying carriers they still run into the same dynamics and market dynamics that you as a, as a brand new broker run into that sometimes there's not that data that's out there. So we look at a number of different variables that can analyze and look at your customers. Do you have payment history? How long have you been working with your customer? Maybe you can actually show us remittances that you've been paying, getting paid in the last five months that show that you've got a $30,000 check that comes every 15th of the month or something. There might be some other variables and other data points that we can analyze and look at the good thing about what well, we were a smaller factoring shop, there are some larger shops that have a lot of corporate red tape that basically the score is the score. Sorry. And they'll say, nope, we're not going to take the chance. We're not going to take that risk. Uh, when you're working with a smaller shop, you actually have the time to be able to say, listen, I've been working with these guys. I know this is my brother-in-law's you know, company or this is this person. And there's there's more to the story that we can kind of come to an agreement on that credit decision, as opposed to just saying, nope, they don't have that score. Sorry, it is what it is. We can start them off and say, listen, let's try them out with 10,000. Maybe we can try it out, see how that relationship goes. If everything's flowing all right, then, then we can start to build it up. And that's the same thing as another factoring company looking at you as a account debtor, right? They're going to give you that $2,500 and then that 5,000. Once you've established that relationship, then they're like, hey, I've been working with Dennis's brokerages for the past three months everything is working smooth. And so it's that same level of scrutiny that we're looking at you as a brand new broker that we might look at a shipper with the same data points and just see what information is available that's out there and then make an assessment from there. So not always a one size fits all. It's it's more about, you know, how how large is the company and and Dennis actually had a really good point when he said something about building trust with that customer. You're also building trust with the factory company. So at some point that account debtor, so that shipper, how much do we trust them that if we're going to be accepting $10,000, $30,000, $100,000 worth of credit limit, do we trust that we're actually going to get those payments in return? So uh, one of those things, not one size fits all, but you know, we love it if there's credit data that, that's out there. But if there's not, you got to kind of peel open the you know layers of the onion and figuring out, okay, you know, who is this company and are they viable? Do we trust them? Dennis, I think your sound just went away. Sorry. I love the fact that you're flexible and that it's not a one size fits all type scenario, the way mm -hmm. you described it. One thing I want to add is this. When you're talking about financial management, credit management, risk management, okay, the question I want you to ask yourself when it comes to a new shipper, bringing, getting credit for a new shipper is this. Would you personally assume the risk of of uh, give, extending them credit. Would you extend the risk of 5,000 if you knew you were gonna eat it all? Would you extend the risk to 10,000 if you knew you were gonna, if there was a high probability you were gonna eat it all? The reality is this, okay? I'm gonna tell you a quick story. My first year as a freight broker, and this might scare some of you, but it shouldn't. My first year as a freight broker, we did $1.2 million in sales. It was okay, I had no experience. We learned a lot. We had no factoring relationship. We took all the risk ourselves, okay? and. For the most part, we did a really good job. And I remember right at the end of the year, we had a shipper that we extended credit to. They stopped paying us and then they filed bankruptcy. And it cost us, I think it was like 12 grand. It wasn't a big, it wasn't a large amount, fortunately. But I remember how painful it was to eat that 12 grand. Because that came right off of our bottom line. See, here you got to do the math. 
in order for me to make, I still had to pay the carriers. Okay. So for me to make up that 12 grand, let's say, let's just do it. You know, I'm not very good at math, but 12 grand. Let's assume that the carrier uh, cost on that was 9,600. Let's assume there was 20% margin and I had 9,600 I had to pay to the to the uh, carriers, right? 9,600. If I was averaging $200 a load, that means the next 48 loads that I did were free. I didn't get paid on them because that's the 12 grand I lost. Okay. So I had to run 48 loads just to make up for that one bad decision or that one bad credit risk. Okay. So having a factoring company teach you and help you to understand the credit management, the financial management, the risk management as a startup is invaluable. Yes, there's a cost, but I promise you, they're going to make way better decisions on assessing credit from their perspective and from their position than you are. And I can tell you right now, they want to approve the credit. Why? Absolutely. Because if they assess the credit and then they don't approve it, it actually costs them money. If they approve it, there's an opportunity for them and you to make money. Okay, so they want to approve it, right? So if they run credit, it costs them money every time they run credit. Just so you know, it's not free for them to run credit, right? There's a there's a, a labor cost. There's a technical cost. There's a hard. There's a lot of things that go into that. So I promise you, they want to approve it. The cool thing about what Tom just says is that they're flexible and they'll work with you, particularly if you have an established relationship with that shipper. So good to hear that and good question. Thanks, guys. All right. Here's a question from Tim Quirk. Tim uh, says, it's been my experience after multiple years in business that most of the time a factoring company denies one of my loads. It's an issue that they are having with the carrier and not my brokerage. Have either of you seen this before? I haven't personally, but I'll let Tom speak to that. Yeah. it's. I mean, this happens multiple times where, you know, if we have a carrier who's got a claim with another brokerage entity or there's been some sort of advance or there's been some sort of chargeback that happened somewhere else. The other, the, the, the piece about that, that it's not like that they are denying your credit because what's going to happen. And I'd love to see that transaction and how it all played out. Because if we had a client that there was a chargeback of a $500 load, uh, or there was a $500 chargeback for one load that was over here. And now our carrier is submitting a 500 load for Timothy's and uh, uh, for, for Timothy's load. We might not pay the carrier, but we might have that $500 deducted off, which then we're still going to invoice Timothy's brokerage and we're still going to report that credit data. So having a situation where they're basically just saying, we're not working with you as a carrier, and so then therefore they're not going to accept you as being the, and they're not going to approve you that I, there's, there's probably more pieces of the story that are in that situation. Um, they might be just cutting ties with that carrier altogether and that, that they're just not even purchasing anything new, but usually if they're looking at it and you have great credit, they're, they're, they're probably going to use a good invoice to offset a bad invoice. And so they'd still have that flow through their systems. So I would say in this scenario, it sounds like almost if that they're not even buying it or they're not even approving it at all, they're probably exiting that carrier relationship. So it might not have anything to do with you. It might just be a carrier factoring relationship issue. That's kind of the root cause of that one. Yeah. And the same way that a factoring company has to assess the, the credibility of the relationship that they have with a the shipper, they have to assess that same credibility and relationship that they have with a broker and with the carrier. So, you know, there are going to be factoring companies that probably don't want to do business with certain carriers for whatever reason, the same reason why you as a broker have reasons why you don't, don't want to do business with certain carriers. Now, those reasons might be different, okay, but there may be a reason. And again, I think Tom explained it well, so I'm going to step aside on that one. Uh, and again, sign up for the freight broker credit, free credit, $250 value, costs you zero today right? Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit. Even if you can't go through it today or, or this next week, get signed up for it. Um, you're going to have, I think you have at least 90 days to access the training before, it, you know, guys probably is going to shut you off. But, um, but yeah, get signed up for that. And if anybody's looking for factoring now and you are an established broker with an MC, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow. All right, let's uh, see what else we got. Okay, so here's, this is maybe the follow-up question. So one of my prospects said, you need to go to manufacturers, distributors, suppliers. And I didn't understand what she meant under the word suppliers. I guess I should have clarified it during the call. Okay, 
So again, some of these terms are used synonymously. Okay. Suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, don't let it, don't get confused. Your goal is to find producers, manufacturers, distributors, importers, exporters, people that control freight spend. Okay. They don't all have the same term or name or terminology or whatever. The ultimate goal is if you're focusing on the food industry, let's say you're in bottled beverages, right? And you're, you're tacking that niche, right? Just a, a niche that we did really well in and is a great niche, by the way. Um, bottled beverages, there are going to be bottlers. There are going to be distributors. There are going to be retailers, right? Typically that's how it will work in that, in that format. Um, and in most cases, you're going to want to work direct with the bottler, the person who's considered kind of a manufacturer, someone who's actually bottling the water, right? They're taking it up out of the ground. They're putting it in bottles, they're casing it up, and then they're selling it and or through distributors. And then sometimes those distributors will control the freight that goes to the end retail buyer, right? So your retail store like Wegmans or tops or any of the big retail chains out there that buy water, right? And then sell it to the consumer. So don't let that slow you down. I think you're on track. Um, engage. You're going to learn a lot about whatever niche you're in, who controls the freight bills. And that's where you want to hone in on. Okay. When you start hearing a lot of, oh, my freight's customer routed, that should raise a red flag. And you should then try to pivot into a different part of that sales go-to-market strategy that they have somewhere in their distribution, okay? So you might want to swim up, upstream in that, okay? Hope that helps. Good, good, good. All right, here you go. Good question for you. Hey, guys, just wondering if you guys service Canadian customers. Yeah, currently we do not service Canadian customers, so that is one limitation. Uh, we have the... We have the resources and we've got key partners that we can either refer you to. We have explored that option. Uh, one of the things when it comes to factoring, there is just no different than when you have a financing relationship, you have a personal guarantee. If those of you guys who aren't familiar with what a UCC filing is, uh, Canada has their own specific UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code that collateralizes the sale of the accounts receivables. And so that personal guarantee depending upon that jurisdiction, because they have province uh, uh, restrictions, limitations, and depending upon where you are in Canada, uh, there's different processes for that. So we are not experts when it comes to mm -hmm. signing up Canadian brokerage clients. Mm -hmm. So I will whole, wholeheartedly admit that, but those are one of those things. If you give us a call, we'll talk through it and I'll explain what we can and can't do. And if the opportunity is present, we can reach out to some of our vendor partners and some of our partners in the space to see what we can do to help somebody out. Yeah, perfect. Um, all right. Next question, Aram asks, is there a way that factoring companies could help out customers, shippers, distributors who are paying late, for example, 75 to 90 days? So hopefully I'm reading your question correctly. You are, you have a shipper that's paying in 75 to 90 days. Is there a way that the factoring company can help improve that? I think that's what your question is. Is that, is that how you read it, Tom? Um. Yeah, let's see. Help out customers who are paying. If we're if if uh, Aram is the actual client of ours, then the answer is yes, because we're going to get you paid. <laughs> you know, so there's that same day payment. We're going to process the carrier payables and everything like that. But as far as if it's the entity themselves that we're trying to help them improve their credit terms and their their net payment terms, I have we've run into situations before where the billing process is clunky where we have helped our clients is maintaining that open relationship and asking them, is there anything that we can do from a processing perspective administratively that is that will improve that that speed of when that payment is coming in? So depending upon what that what if, if it's you're asking if that payment is going to you and you're looking for that cash flow, absolutely, we'll be able to help your business out. But if the question is more tailored for how are we going to help that customer? Probably not. If they've got their net terms already baked into their MSAs, or that's just what they, that's just what 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 it is to work with them. You signing up as a vendor for them. Probably not much that we can do. But we always have that conversation. Are there ways that we can streamline the billing process in order to speed this thing up? And you, as the client, if you're signing up with us, you would just have to anticipate. If, like I mentioned earlier, we've got clients where whose customers are paying in 15 days. 
you have clients who are, you know, their customers are paying in 90 days. And so you'll have to anticipate that there is a cost of capital when it comes to having to wait that additional payment term and that just expect that if that is a customer that you're working with that has those extended payment terms, it might cost a little bit more than some of the customers that they're paying in 15 days. Can you, I have a follow-up question to that. What happens, so let's say you invoice a shipper, right? Or, or a shipper's invoiced for, in their term, or 30 days, mm -hmm. okay? And you now purchase that receivable. At the end of that 30 days, if they don't make that payment, what do you guys do if it's not paid on time? How does that work? Explain to me the process for how a broker, what the role of the broker would be in that process and what your process is for following up with late receivables. We're, we're big on, we understand because we have a brokerage background, we have team members that own and operated their own brokerages. We're very sensitive when it comes to customer relationships. So the first piece, the first response is going to be going to you as the client and saying, hey, your customer's not paying this. There's Here's what their AR data looks like. These things are reaching out over to 60 days and then asking them and probing them on why it's happening. Usually it's we'll see like maybe one to two or five that there's some kind of that there's more administrative. It's just an error that's within their AP system, but it becomes a perpetual problem where it's an entire batch of invoices. Those payments are pushing out. Then we start having that conversation more with the client. We start getting involved with the customer as well. So first and foremost, we're going to get, we're, we're speaking to our client and seeing if they can resolve the issue first, just because we understand that there's that relationship. And then next, we're going to engage with the customer and say, hey, what's going on? Why isn't this going through? And seeing if there's maybe an administrative error, if there's a cash flow issue and, and approaching it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that, I thought that was important to clarify because that would be a question that I would be asking if I were in anybody's shoes, right? Yeah. Cool. Chris has a question. Perhaps it's a novice question. I have my MC number, cage number, authority, SB certs. Uh, what would be the benefit of acquiring multitude of factoring companies rather than a, f than a few of quality? So one important point to clarify as far as acquiring a factoring company, you can only have one factoring company, right? It's no different. We have our senior lenders that we work with, our banks, our financiers. So we can only work with, I can't go out and go and find multiple different financing options where I have a personal guarantee on that. They're collateralized on my assets and my business. Um, and so you can only work with, from a financing perspective, one factoring company at a time. But as far as the, the landscape of going out and selling all those other factoring companies, those are your creditors. So there are a few of quality, which is great, but going pulling this back to that broker credit report that we're looking at and the more creditors reporting, the better. So if you only have five good quality factoring companies, it's not terrible, but what are the chances that that next factoring company, that carrier that they're prying into your credit, what's the chances that that factoring company, the next one wants to be the sixth one, right? Now, higher probability, if you've got 50 factoring companies that are out there, that probability of that 51st one accepting you is probably going to be a lot higher because they've already reviewed the landscape and they've said, oh, there's all these other factoring companies. This isn't that much of a risk because they've already done all this due diligence and they see that Chris's brokerage is, has strong standing credit. There's a higher probability that you're going to get that approval on those ones once you've developed that volume and that momentum. So the quality ones is good and, and it, it helps you start. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the and going back to that difference between us as consumers versus business consumers, we don't want to have a lot of creditors. But on the business side, it's good to have all those trade credit references that are out there. Yeah. And just to clarify, as a broker, you will only have one factoring company. OK, you'll only have one factoring company that you're factoring receivables for through. All right. Because they're going to have to file a UCC to guarantee the, the, the receivables transaction. Right. Correct. But that factoring company and your company will could be approved by dozens of different factoring companies that represent carriers mm -hmm. in an effort to try to streamline the onboarding of those carriers and covering loads and getting them paid okay so just want to clarify that am i correct tom you're correct yep perfect all right scrolling scrolling we're going to do a couple more questions then we got to go we're running a little bit late but uh, ba, 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 ba. Thanks, from flatbed. Does the fact okay? Here you go. Question from Charles: Does a factoring company show a list or database showing the carriers they refuse to do business with? Do you have like a do not, uh, do not work with list on carriers? There, 
there's an element of what we do where we can advise, but we really can't tell you what you can and can't do on who you work with from that perspective. Now, we do have an underlying risk associated with if we have indicators that have shown that that carrier is potentially a double brokering carrier because or if that they are a scammer. We want to make sure that we provide you those educational resources to help you understand who you should and should not be working with. Because at the end of the day as well, if you put that load on somebody else's back and then they go ahead and double broker it or sell it off or they're stealing the freight and they become silent, then you're putting your customer's relationship at jeopardy, which then impacts our receivables position. So there is an element of there where we are concerned and we want to get out in front of it and provide you educational resources. But it's it's one of those things we can't tell you. We don't have a, a necessarily a, a DNU list specifically for you as a client, but we will absolutely provide you the resources and the carrier vetting tools and everything else that helps you to at least do your homework and due diligence. So then that way we can, and trust me, we get those conversations that happen often where they've already booked it with that carrier. We run the MC on our side. We're like, you know, uh, hey, Dennis, uh, I don't know if you know this, but they've been flagged by a number of different resources as being potentially high risk and double brokering. You probably should stop hauling for them in the future. Here's why. And then it becomes more of an educational conversation on why. And oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that. And you know, so it's pointing them and providing them those insights, but we're just not going to say, Hey, you ran that load with them. We're not going to pay that carrier payable. It's more, you know, you can, you can, you know, uh, push a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So, right. to speak. so right. give you the resources and hopefully you will work with us to make sure that you're making the best decisions for your business. Perfect. And last question for today. Samara so trucking says for a carrier who became a broker and was dealing with a factoring firm, would that consider, would that be considered a new broker or would, will it roll over? Does that make sense to you, Tom? Uh, for a carrier became a broker and was dealing with a factoring company, I'm assuming maybe on the carrier side. Yes, they were a carrier that were factoring and, and now they came, become a broker. Mm -hmm. And then and then would they would we consider them as a new broker? So that it, interesting question. And we do have this often. We have clients who had a existing carrier side and they're looking to start up a brand new freight brokerage. A lot of that depends on the corporate structure, the legal structure, who's the actual owner, because remember you as you're on the carrier side, you're signing a personal guarantee to make sure that your obligations are being fulfilled with that other factoring company under your separate business operation. Now, it's no different than if I go out and I have a factoring operation, I have my personal guarantees with my lenders that if I were to go out and start a bakery, I don't know, then that 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 uh, uh, that relationship, that financing relationship, they're going to look at my personal credit. They're going to look at my personal guarantees and they're going to want to make sure that there's a comfort level and knowing that, you know, what are those how are those business operations interacting with one another? Right. If I start a bakery, they're going to go probably going to see that as less than or there's there's no room for commingling or anything. But as far as a trucking company and a logistics company, those things play together. So there's a lot more that we're going to look at. Who is the other factoring company? What's the trucking company's name versus what's the brokerage company name? Are you signing up? Are you Dennis Trucking and Dennis Brokerage? Is your customer with U.S. Beverages? Are you signing up and getting listed as Dennis Trucking on it? So now is there an opportunity for our receivables that we're financing to get directed to the other factoring company? So there's a number of different uh, situations there. The, the best answer is we love to have both the carrier side and the brokerage side because we can uh, it's it's there's there's more opportunity for us to manage that relationship and mitigate risks and, and help you out. As opposed to if there's two financing relationships, there's just a lot more variables that come into whether or not we can or can't work with you, or whether or not the other factoring company is acceptable with this. So there's a number of different nuances there. And my answer is this. If you're a carrier or you're a broker or you're a carrier broker. The easiest answer, because there is no one size fits all answer to that, is to go to freightbreakerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow, fill out the form, give them the basic information. They'll get in touch with you. They're going to ask you 42 different questions to clarify, to make sure that they understand exactly what you're doing, how it's working. And, you know, they'll advise you as to whether, hey, um, we can do both the carrier and the broker. We can't do the carrier. We can do the broker, whatever it is. And then at that point, you can make an educated decision. Right now, it's a very nuanced topic, right? And so it's very hard to give a one-size answer. He gave you a good framework to go by. It's going to depend upon a lot of the different structure and the 
credit relationships you have, but ultimately, um, Tom and his team are willing to spend the time and help advise you on that. So if you guys, listen, this is going to wrap it up for today. You guys have been amazing. Some great questions. Tom's been an amazing guest. I think we got a lot of great feedback from people about your level of expertise and the understanding that you've brought to the group. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here. If you guys, again, you want to get the free freight broker credit training online, it's online, go at your own pace training, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash broker credit. If you want to hear more, get more information and talk to Tom's team about setting up as an actual factoring company, assuming that you're already a broker or you're already a carrier with an MC number, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash cash flow. Tom, where can they find you? Where's the best place for them to find you? Operify.com, easy. Uh, you guys can reach out. I can put it in the chat. Uh, my direct number is 682-330-7700. Or you can get dial our main number, which is 888-OPERFY9. Yeah. And then make sure, obviously, if you guys are, the only way you can get the free credit right training is if you go through that link. Um, and if you go through the cash flow link, obviously, you know, we've established a relationship where they've already, you know, know that you're coming from Freight Broker Bootcamp. So that's going to have a, a big impact on kind of the priority and what questions. And they already have that relationship with us and they already understand. They vetted us just like they would vet a carrier, just like they would vet a broker, just like they would vet a shipper. So they've already done all that. So that's the benefit to you. So Tom, awesome. Great job. Phenomenal. Yeah. Appreciate you guys being here, everybody. Listen, if you're curious about becoming a Freight Broker Freight Agent, check out FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. Um, and we will be back next Monday with another Freight Burger Freight Bootcamp Live. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. And we'll talk to you then. Thanks, Dennis.